There are times that we have some JavaScript code that is pretty CPU intensive. While it is executing, it keeps other code from executing. We call this code blocking, and in this tutorial, we will look at how we can prevent that. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. As I have learned JavaScript, I remember experiences of looking at other people's code and seeing uses of set timeout, but with a timer of zero. I would wonder, why are they doing that? Well, it was probably to prevent code blocking. That is the technique we are going to look at in this tutorial. Set timeout lets you invoke a function after a certain amount of time. It takes two parameters, the function that will be invoked and the amount of time to wait before that function is invoked. Let's look at an example really quick before we talk about code blocking. So here's my JavaScript file. Ignore the, the console log statement for now. I'm going to add a set timeout here. That's the command. And then inside of parentheses, we pass in two parameters. One is a function and one is the amount of time. So first off, let's pass in a function. And I will define an anonymous function here. I'll just do, simply do it in line like this. And all I'm going to have it do is log to the console. Simple as that. Now the second parameter is the amount of time to wait. So let's say we want this to wait one second. We would enter a thousand milliseconds. So that is our set timeout. All right, let me just save that and we'll take a look at it really quick. Let me open up the console before I refresh this. And now I refresh and there comes a high about a second later. And so that is set timeout. The amount of time we specify is what it waits before it invokes the function. Now we can use set timeout to help prevent code blocking. In this example that I'm going to show, we will draw on several concepts we have taught in earlier tutorials. Higher order functions, callbacks, closure. If you need to review any of these concepts, I would encourage you to view those tutorials first. I've included links in the description section of this tutorial. Now to illustrate code blocking problem and how to fix it, let me show you what I've set up. So jumping back to Sublime, first let me get rid of this set timeout example we put here. I have two JavaScript files app.js and appnext.js. Now let me show you how I have these assigned in the HTML file. So app.js I've placed here in the head tag. So this code will load and execute. Then it will finish loading the rest of the HTML file. And then at the end here, I have appnext.js. And all appnext.js is, a, all it does is a log statement. Now that log statement is based upon this variable we establish in app.js. I simply get the milliseconds using date.now and then in app next when it finally executes it simply subtracts that start value from date.now. So it lets us see how many milliseconds it takes for the thing to execute. So now the other stuff I have set up in app.js is I simply have a function that counts from zero to a billion and it increments a variable as it's doing that. And so this is the intensive code. This is going to take some time to finish executing to count that far. Now let's take a look at how long it takes without calling this function. So right now that is commented out. So if I refresh the page, we can see that we get one. So very quickly, it doesn't take long at all. Now let me jump back. I'm going to uncomment this. So now we are invoking that count function. Save that. Now let's see how long it takes. We get the console log statement that it finished, and then we get 1,741. So it took longer, much longer because of this pretty CPU intensive function that we're calling here. So now while this is executing, 
Anything else that could possibly execute is put on hold. It doesn't execute that. So how can we prevent that from happening? Well, as I mentioned, we're going to use set timeout to do that. Now, what I would like to do is set up a function that I can call and pass in any function that may be CPU intensive. And this function will use set timeout to prevent code blocking. All right, so here's how we're going to set that up. First, let me declare the function. Prevent block is what we're going to call it. Now, the parameter for this function is going to be callback because I want to be able to pass in a function that can be executed by this function, hence a callback. And the reason I'm setting it up this way is then I can use this function anytime I want, anytime I need it to prevent code blocking. So now let's go ahead and set up the body of the function. And the body consists of set timeout. And we're going to have set timeout invoke a function. And the amount of time that it's going to wait is simply zero. There's no need to wait longer than that. What basically going to occur is when we call this function, and pass in a function we want to invoke, we're going to have that function invoked inside a set timeout. So by calling set timeout first, it allows the rest of the code, everything else to continue on while it is invoking this function that we passed in. So that's how it works. The calling of set timeout automatically says, okay, we're going to call this in a little bit, even though it's zero, we're gonna call this later. And so other things can continue to execute. And so that continues to go on and we call it right away and then that function goes ahead and execute. Now here's how we handle the callback. So inside of set timeout, we want to check and make sure that the callback variable is a function. We don't want to try to invoke something that's not a function or we'll get an error. So I'm just checking to see that it is a function and then if it is we simply invoke it like that and since that's inside of set timeout that prevents the code blocking that we're talking about so now we've got this set up how do we use it well let me comment out this instead of calling this function directly we call prevent block and we pass in that function. That's how we would do it. So let me go ahead and save that and let's see how this works. Jump out, refresh, we get one millisecond and then see when the code finishes. So we can see that it continues on. It allows other things to happen. It allows the rest of the HTML file to load and then it allows this code to execute here on appnext.js. And then finally, the count function finishes and it logs to the console finished. And so we were able to prevent code blocking, but still invoke a function that is pretty CPU intensive. So a nice little JavaScript tip there. Now, before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away, or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.